All right, we are shuffling up for the final round of the Calling Auckland. And we couldn't have two stronger players to battle it out for the coveted trophy and that gold foil spring tunic. In the booth, you once again have the dream team. I'm Callum Giddens, and I'm joined by Kieran McIntaggart and Ian Kenderdine. And it all comes down to this. And the grand there's, final. A, there's a brute player in the finals. <laughs> I know yeah. you're happy about that. Kiki, do it, for the, do it for the brute gods. Do it for brute life. Love it. Oh, yep. this, is, this is super exciting. And, of course, I'm sure you guys have uh, talked about it. We had 43% prism players in the sealed, yet here we are in the final Two shadow Two players, shadow how players. amazing is that? It's fantastic, and honestly, I think that, you know, it's a really fantastic matchup, just from a community, I mean, both these players are so beloved by the FAB community. I mean, Matt Rogers, you know, he has been a competitive player from the beginning. He's always been the person to beat. Kiki has, I mean, I just gotta say, one of the loveliest people I've ever met in my entire life and and you always like that there's almost a little bit of a David and Goliath kind of story going on there I feel um, never really gotten to those heights of a competitive play but they are such a standout player yeah absolutely and this is a bit of a fun trivia fact this is a rematch of a final of a road to nationals in from Wellington wow. yeah. from last year so yeah. these two uh, they may have faced off since then I know but uh, they did meet in the final was their dash mirror uh, Matt Rogers yeah. man managed to come away with a win on that one, so can Kiki get revenge? Will we sort of you know, crown a new superstar in the fair community? Oh, absolutely. It, it's, it, I just cannot wait. I'm tingling with excitement to see what is going to happen. Uh, I think that we've got word that Matt Rogers has gone to the bathroom, so that's uh, you know, an important update. <laughs> we'll be <laughs> waiting on the match for, for a little bit. That, that is uh, wise. I mean, I tell you what, I... Um, have been in those situations before and you just gotta say, look, I'm really sorry, I have to go to the bathroom and take a nervous bee because it is, you know, you don't wanna be sitting there trying to think about your game and going, oh God, I'm really busting to go to the toilet. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but this is what it has all come down to, the culmination of a weekend that has seen almost 250 players being whittled down first to the top 32 at the end of day one, and finally to the top eight, and now down to just two. Yeah, and a really interesting thing, this is what we were saying uh, in our breakdown when we were talking about drafting at the top of the top 32, is if you can be the only uh, person drafting mm. a character, you have got a really good shot, as uh, both of these players have found out they got, got through their pod there in the final however this isn't the traditional way of only drafting uh, uh, brute because I know uh, I was talking to Henry Moore he was uh, four to five brute cards deep before he changed mm. to Bolden as was um, Adam Little uh, mm. little Adam had uh, taken uh, some brute cards as well so Kiki's pool isn't a uh, isn't just a slam dunk, right. uh, but they have really worked well with the cards they managed to get. The one, the one thing that we have seen in Kiki's deck, a lot of zero defense, and that could come that back true. to that haunt them true. in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, that's the thing. I feel hate drafting actually plays, you know, quite an important factor in Monarch, mm. and sometimes it's not necessarily hate drafting. It's just. I wanted to play this deck and the cards yeah. didn't come around. And we've seen that. So it's, it, yeah, I think between the two people who almost drafted uh, the, um, oh, and it looks like Matt Rogers is back in the booth now, so we'll be seeing that final get underway any moment now. We're back to the uh, top down view. We see the players shuffling up. And oh, I just got to um, point out, I am absolutely loving Kiki's Nails. I think that uh, it really, you know, just when you know you're going to be on the feature match, it's, it helps to really go that extra step, you know. Exactly. When you, when, you, when you wake up and you're like, one more draft to go, I know I'm making top eight. <laughs> yeah. you, you got to add a little bit of flair, a little bit of spice. You really do. Nail game on point. I'm absolutely. loving it. Now this, is, now, this is going to be very interesting. The, the style here, I believe Matt's going to look to be more methodical, long game. Uh, type, type with chain and I feel like Kiki has to be the aggressor, has to come out and really put uh, Matt on the clock um, uh, because if Matt gets to set up uh, and this game goes long, it's just 
harder and harder for Kiki to find a win here. Yeah, yeah. but potentially, although we have seen Matt go fairly aggressive with the soul shackles, mm, I feel, in mm, previous games. So, and it's interesting because both these decks require a little bit of setup, I feel. Um, mm, so yeah. with Chain, you need to get those soul shackles down. With Levi, you, you need to get the six power in the graveyard. You do, And yeah. what's going to be interesting to see is how these players navigate their tempo and their pivot turns. Because if yep. you get stuck with a bunch of blood deck cards in your, uh, in your banish zone, and then the other player puts the pressure on, forces a four-card block. Okay, oh. and then we see the handshake. And so Matt Rogers, of course, being the highest seed, he gets to choose who is going first. And that is su such a key to this. That's the mm. first, um, you know, the first blow of this battle is, is getting that advantage of being able to pick first or second. Absolutely, and I think that, generally speaking, as Chain in this matchup, I'm wanting to go first. I want to get my Soul Shackle started right away, and that's exactly what we're seeing Matt yeah. doing here. Which is, which, which is really quite interesting as well, because... Uh, Kiki, as the brute player, is is happy uh, to go second and block out this first turn and get some uh, cards into the graveyard if uh, if Matt uh, gives them a chance. Yeah, I see there is one smash with Big Tree in there, so that can't defend. But looks like a Boneyard Marauder and a couple of other cards in there, so they should should be able to de defend all wow, this. Wow, one, of, the, one of them's nice. a Dreadwood uh, Rumbler, a Deadwood Rumbler though, so that's two cards that can't defend. Oh, actually, yeah, I will say that was a really nice play there. For Matt just getting that Seeds of Agony out and uh, dealing that cheeky point of arcane damage and then using that Unheld Rights to put it back on the bottom of his deck for later. Absolutely, and uh, you know, just putting a little bit of pressure on, probably is aware that Oh, all... wow. Yeah, we already see. I, I can't tell whether Kiki could have defended with anything there. It's possible that, uh, that, that, that they had three cards with no defense. So we can see a smash with the big tree, a pulping, oh, wow. and... Yeah, it was yeah. double smash with Big Tree. That's yeah. the, the danger of the living that broke life. Yeah, and, and drew into a pulping as well. Oh, so the, this at least a oh, good yeah. chance to hit this on the pulping. This is definitely getting dominate and go again. Now, that's More potentially dominant. possible. Now, if we look at the... Uh, yeah, yeah, there we go, split hits. So if we look at the equipment here, we can see Matt has the Arcanic Aetherweath and the Evenfold. And uh, Kiki's got the Ebonfold, the all-important Hooves, the Shadow Beast, and the Iron Rock Gauntlet. So mm. both players have, I feel, drafted probably most of the equipment they're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah, that is, I mean, it's, it's Matt, you'd obviously prefer to have, a, you know, some stubby hammers, maybe an Iron Hide, the legs, but... That, yeah, that is that is some. He's got the important parts, and yeah. that's what matters. Absolutely. Now, this this pulping, as we know, if it's not defended by two or more cards, and, and it can't be because of the dominate effect, it gets go again. So now Kiki's going to be coming in with another attack here. And uh, I, I love and it. Yeah, the smash one. with the big tree, my favorite card in the set. I mean, it's just, you know sometimes you just want to smash someone with a big tree. <laughs> it really it, it, it's got that Hacksaw Jim Duggan vibe it to it. It really does, and it's, I mean, yeah, you already look at Matt, he is considering, he's actually been, he's thinking about putting his whole hand in, because that is seven, yep, yeah. no turn, so Kiki in the driver's seat to, uh, he took a little bit of damage on turn one. Sorry, they took a little and that, damage on turn one, and now they are back. And that, and that was a handful of no defense that Kiki was able mm. to get rid of, which which is also very key. Although, look, is that another? No, so now we've got, yeah, it's another smash. Some Dread Screamers. The Convulsions. I, I do wonder, though, that uh, taking that three damage on turn one, I feel Kiki would have preferred that obviously not to happen and yeah. would have defended out with mm. a defense card. So. Do you ever think about defending with the Ironhide Gauntlet on turn one? I mean, it might it's, just it's be... It's tough because it does get another non-six card into your discard, which, uh, which you know... No, it's all, oh, it, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's awkward of the... Uh, it's awkward with uh, that... If you are trying to stock up with those yeah. six spells, and, yeah. and and also knowing how Chain has that long game and going mm. wide, you do want to hold on to it because well, of the because of the amount of non-defending in your in your deck. Yeah, definitely. Well, Kiki's picked up another tree. Uh, they are definitely very angry. And I, they, I also they, like the play. The forest, the, de the deforestation yeah. that is going on. Is, I is also absolutely... really like the fact that Kiki uh, pitched the Dread Screamer there to, uh, for it to come back mm, later for, yeah, is, for yeah. that late game go again which and is going to be very key I think that's been a bit of a theme that Kiki's played throughout um, I was fortunate to see their semi-final match as well mm. and also the quarter-final and that's Ooh. happened a lot I like Ooh. this cheeky little poke here with this the Galaxy Black those Blood Debt cards are starting to stack up in the Banished Zone for Matt Rogers mm. here that uh, you know um, 
piercing shadow vice rip through reality those are some expensive cards and it yeah. doesn't look like he's going to be able to get them out of there this so, turn and that's going to be three blood debt damage and mm. I, I was uh, uh, commenting earlier that you know that three life that kiki lost on turn one you know may come back to haunt them a little bit but yeah. it looks like they might just be able to you know pick I, back, I feel pick like back up. i feel like kiki has to block here to to stop the arcane damage uh, that uh hit uh, from uh, galaxy blackwood course because there is a rip through reality in in, yeah. uh, in matt's uh uh, banish zone there. Yeah, I can't tell whether he's uh, got any cards in hand to be able to play it though, is the thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I do wonder if that might have been a good spot to use the, who's the, the Shadow Beast. Right. Because yeah, it was yeah, coming that through one. Been a nice that, defense, that, actually. And yeah. saying that, um, getting, uh, yeah, I suppose. A, oh, Zella Spell saying, like, I like this play. This oh, is the go again. Yes. Piling on the pressure, Kiki is. This is. I like this because uh, should. Hopefully, uh, I don't know what's in the arsenal, but should at at minimum be able to re-swing with the, the old, after the old this. Axe. Yep. So taking one. And is it the axe coming in, or well, there is a card in the arsenal? No, it's it's the axe. Here it comes. I like oh, let's see. I like that play. Oh, it hits. Oh, lovely. It hits five damage. This is great. I mean, I tell you what, both players, are, <laughs> the demons are battling. Yeah, yeah. They, they are, they've been both blessed. And what's, re variants. what's really tough for Matt here is that by blocking with cards out of his hand, and he's going to take three soul shackles next turn, that blood debt is actually starting to mount up in his uh, banish zone, and, and, and it's not the cheapest of stuff to get out. Yeah, because oh, I, I, I believe, I, I feel like Matt may look to potentially keep at least a blue in hand here. That would enable yeah. their Seeds of Agony to rip through reality and Galaxy yeah. Black. Galaxy Black, yeah, yeah, that's a nice turn. So, so Matt electing to keep two cards in hand here. He's not unhappy about banishing non, uh, yes, the only one blood debt added, but I don't think he's unhappy about that. This is very interesting. This this is possibly a point that if he plays the seeds, that Kiki may look to use that ebb and fold to, yeah. stop, wow. to stop the... Um, that's, absolutely. that's a really good point, actually. I'm, we'll be interested to see how this uh, plays out. We know that Matt Rogers has at least one blue resource card in hand, I think, so he's... He's going to be looking here to see. Oh, that's a Warmonger's recital in his in his arsenal. So he know we know that he can set up quite a few non-attacks. That looks like a, the blue belittle in his hand that we saw earlier. Seeds here. Now th this is going to be a key play on what uh, what Kiki does yep. next. Okay. Now it is time. Is it going to be rip or piercing? Yeah, piercing shadow vice. Okay. So I think he's going to be trying to... Okay, so that's dealing the two. Now, it is, Kiki's got to think long and hard here about whether to use that spell void. It is a big decision as well, because yeah. that is a critical sort of fail-safe that if you cannot banish cards late game... Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that I do like about Kiki's build, a lot of, uh, with the smash with the big trees and the uh, Dreadwood Rumblers, is that, that uh, they aren't necessarily... Uh, banishing three cards so has options to attack without banishing cards uh, for a little while mm. before starting that blood debt up. Yep. And I, I, well, I really like this play from Matt Rogers of playing the Piercing Shadow Vice instead of the Rip Through Reality first because yeah. obviously he's made the Soul Shackle. The Piercing Shadow Vice has go again anyway, whereas if you were to play the Seeds and then play a Rip, you know, Kiki might be able to shut that down, yeah. uh, that arcane damage, and prevent you from, you know, continuing with your turn. I, I think that's quite a heads up play because, yeah, yeah if, if you weren't sort of aware of that ebb and fold uh, spell void play and you went for that seeds and threw it through early, that could be sort of a crushing tempo loss there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And this is. I mean, a, that, this is why these two have made it all the way to the yeah, finals. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it, it's, I'm looking at what Kiki's got to defend with. Oh, he's, oh, he's decided to it. take it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yep, so that, that piercing is now coming now through for five, I believe. Coming through five, and they are taking two more damage. So this that will allow Matt to sort of get some of those cards out of the Oh, game. now this is very powerful. So now the yeah, right. reality coming in for four damage, and then they still have he still has a resource left over to be able to come in with that Galaxy Black afterwards. I think I feel like Kiki might have wanted to use that spell void, but you never know. It's it's quite a tempo heavy game so mm. we'll see what Kiki has lined up here because they may be thinking look I can afford to block one of these uh, you know I can afford yep. to take one of these attacks um, if they are going to take one it's probably going to be the rip through because yep. that and now they're going to block oh, the galaxy a red? black 
Yeah, it was a okay, red, red ribbon. One. Yep. And and now the Galaxy Black's probably going to be coming in unless there's something in Matt's arsenal. Oh no, that's right. It's the Warmongers recital. So, it's it looks like uh, yeah, Galaxy Black's going to be coming in. No, in fact, he's first going to pop the Iron Weave to, get to play it, uh, yeah. the other rip through reality. Wow. Oh my god. This, this becomes quite a big turn now. That is, that is. He's, he's sensing blood in the water. He knows Kiki doesn't want to defend. Maybe he's, he's thinking Kiki doesn't have the cards to be able to defend yeah. with. Yeah. And now, yep, it's it's going to have to be another card. All right, and it's just yeah. going to be a swing with the meat axe turn, I think. Yeah. So I feel like Matt has really sort of turned around this game with that yeah, big turn there. Yeah, that was really so nice. So I, I feel... You, you know, as you were mentioning, Colin, perhaps the Ebon Fall cracking for the right, Spell Void may have been a play. Here. All right. Oh, Ooh. it's a six, six power card that's that coming in for five. five. That, that was really yeah. necessary there. And it, it's not only is it powering up that meat axe, it's just fueling another six power card and into it's, Kiki's graveyard. Oh, oh but nice. there's that rise above that we saw before. Yeah. He's only taking one. Also, uh, uh, it's Kiki putting his weapon into the graveyard. Oh, yeah. Hopefully get they'll that, get that back there, Kiki. They, they'll yeah. pick that up. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, uh, table judge will. Uh, will that's <laughs> a classic mistake. I feel we've all done it. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen that happen <laughs> multiple times on um, camera today. I'll uh, I'll just uh, see if we can uh, tell somebody to. So give interesting Kiki to note. Weapon back. Interesting oh. to note there the uh, the soul shackle four. Um, that's only banished one blood deck card. Yeah. Yeah. That and that. That that is a uh, not great for Matt. Like it, it really sort of takes the foot off the gas on his turn because he doesn't have all the options to play from from the banish zone. So there we and go. there okay. we go. We see we've got it sorted out. So I believe that's a blue warmonger's recital coming with the piercing shadow vice. Yeah, and so that's going to represent. Five damage. Five damage. I believe that's a red. Yep. But I believe, and like Ian pointed out, that's not actually the biggest turn there um, no. losing four cards uh, to soul shackle that you couldn't really use mm. and kiki's uh kiki's got oof, is that two dread dreadwood rumblers i do mm. wonder here like if, if kiki might be thinking is this a turn is where i take the damage the and go for yeah. tempo because so, it might be the hooves turn because there are, there is a dread screamers in there Hopefully plus two, two to, rumblers to and hooves. a boneyard marauder yeah absolutely because look if you take five damage here it's kiki you go down to four so mm. you are playing it a little bit risky but matt does have five soul shackles at this mm. point um if you use the hooves to block that prevents one of the damage if you can represent something like you know which you usually can oh, on the buyer taking oh. it if you can like if, if you can represent like 14 damage here it's going to be a lot. Oh, that Yinti Yanti is going to present lethal. No, he's think always thinking about whether to use it or not. It's big. It is. If I tell you what, if he comes in with that, then the, I think the hooves under the bus might be the way to go. Yeah, yeah, he has to play the hooves here. Knowing, knowing that. Yep, look, and there yeah, we go. There we Boom, go. Going down to one. Whoa, that, now that is that, that's now. dangerous though that is that is that a very is, risky that, play now the ebon fold is, is available it is a yeah, risky play but you but know it what? Only I love stops it. one they There's, are uh, they are coming in here and this is this is what uh, uh, this is what's that, this is what's known in the wrestling business as high risk high reward <laughs> yes, so, absolutely. so hopefully uh, Kiki can come in from the top rope and finish this off absolutely okay a critical dread scream here yep. absolutely critical it is only a blue but this is what you talked about earlier Ian putting the foot on the NOS yeah the, the blood dead is about to get banished and here we go yeah first of all we'll see is this going to banish the six power I'm, I, I mean it's, it's a well stocked graveyard there we go card you see Done. now, now that, you want to see not Kiki, as many six powers does, oh, is good, Kiki yeah. also cracked the hooves here. Is this the turn to get to yeah, get the it, extra action point and try and swing three times? Potentially, potentially. I mean, we'll that see, might be because like, I believe one of the dre uh, redwood rumblers in, in Kiki's hands was a blue. Didn't crack. Didn't crack no, the hooves. No, so but maybe you, you might have another opportunity potentially. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Oof. Oh man, going down to one against a chain deck and only having the even fold as your uh, only defense well, against arcane damage. Does he, does, do they even fold here to try and get a different card? That is probably what they're thinking about right now. But, I mean, it's that spell void is so important that if it goes to next turn... 
yet. Oh, there's the Dreadwood Rumbler for eight. Right. Oh, Ooh. and it hits a power. So he's thinking about banishing. Oh, if he puts. Yeah, this Some, is so they, interesting. Are they going to banish a blood debt card? A card with yeah. blood debt into Matt Rogers' banish zone. Or is he going to banish one of his own six powers and then crack that hooves and potentially. I, I think they. May have to consider what, going what, for the hooves. Yeah, yeah, I think it has to be a hooves play because because yeah. you you will get the you'll be able to swing. But do they? The problem is, do oh, they no, have any not, more resources? Have, what color is that? Uh, is that? Yes. Oh, they only have one resource. So I, I don't actually dip, know it, if they have any resources. It depends on what. That, it was um, it was double blue in oh, the was it double in the pitch. blue. One resource. I don't know. Yeah. No. Well, so we, the, the hooves were not cracked. So. So that's. Oh, what's that's okay. What's happening here? Yeah. Okay, now that is That's interesting because there's no follow-up to this. Uh, yeah, so Matt no. could and Matt very well, easily go down to one. Matt yeah. could absolutely go down to one here and then present what is likely to be a completely unblockable attack on the swing back. He's looking through his graveyard. And probably trying about to work out how many, how many seeds has, has come up, how many have gone... Oh. There he is, the methodical Matt Rogers going through the graveyard. Do we know what's in Kiki's arsenal? We don't, do we? I don't actually recall. Um, I was wondering if it could be something like a Boneyard Mortar, but that, mm. that isn't active at this point because there's no yeah. action points available. And we, you know, we are sort of wondering here, like, could that the not using that ebb and fold there? And there it is, going down to one. Here it comes. This is very likely going to be the final turn of the game. Both players on one. And boom, one one blood debt. Oh, that's a seed of agony. Oh, the, those minoisms. And oh, oh, that's two seeds. Of agony. I think that, that might be it. That, that yeah. may very well be it because, interestingly, uh, even though the even fold has Spell Void 2, each of those seeds so, uh, count as an individual source, and you can only use them to prevent one of them. Yeah, that three damage on turn one really uh, sort of coming oh. back to bite Kiki here. Oh, we've got the judge here um, coming yeah, into all. Oh, it looks like Kiki drew, accidentally drew an five. extra card. So um, I feel it may not be super relevant in this instance, but of no. course, like it does need to be corrected. It does need to be corrected. Yes. So as we'll see, the penalty for this is all five cards are revealed, and your opponent gets to choose one to banish face down. That is punishing. It's uh, it's not only uh, you know is it is it getting rid of um, a card from the deck, but it's giving your opponent perfect information about what's in your and, hand and how to and sculpt. And also, their turn. yeah, the defense values of your hand. So it looks like Matt is just really just sort of crossing his T's, dotting his eyes there, just making sure everything is correct. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am looking at that hand. He's probably likely to banish that dread screamer. One thing is because I believe actually. One extra thing we have to point out is we are both those seeds red because they may uh, may need attacks to turn both of those on. That is true. Yeah, that's a good point. That does no, look I like think a it's one red and one yellow from what I can see. It does look like there's a belittle in Matt's hands. Oh, is that a vexing malice as well? Yeah, there is a vexing uh, malice in yeah. his hand, which means the it's amount of arcane over. damage here. Yeah. He knows that there's 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 no there's yeah. In fact, I think he's pointing out that, that yeah. he, he has the win well in hand, yeah. and Kiki knows it as well. They've put up a valiant battle, but there really isn't going to be any way to prevent this amount of arcane damage coming at them yeah. here. The, the, only, the only, only mistake Matt could make here is playing Vixie Mouse without making the Soul Shackle. I think even then... Oh, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah then you but can pop the Ebb and the, Fold. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's actually a good point. That's, that's probably why Matt's being very careful here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, here it comes. Oh, so the game going to finish in style. Fold. Get the Bounding Demigon out, draw a card. That is a good point, though. Like, it's a very easy mistake to make. I mean, yep. I, I don't think we'll see Matt make it. He's no. a very accomplished player. But so Ian, you're correct. This is, why you, this is why you played out to the end. Yeah. One seeds, two seeds, and then the Bounding Demigon, yeah. I'm guessing. And there. Oh, no. We are going to see instead the Vexing Malice. Yeah, so that's four, four arcane, arcane damage. And, and there's the it. hand. Oh. He's done it. Matt Rogers is the champion. Look at him there. He, I tell you what, he's had a bit of a curse of second places recently, but he is now your calling Auckland champion 2021. He's won the trophy. He has won the gold cold foil tunic. Congratulations, Matt.
And we are going to look at that. Look at that emotion yeah. in his face. You can see it there. That's. I mean, that's, that's oh, something. I feel man. that's something that all card players dream of, right? Like when you start playing a card game, winning, you know, winning a very high-level competitive tournament yeah. oh. is just like you know, it's, it's amazing, and it's so difficult to do because it's, not it's... only not only do you have to play sort of incredibly well throughout a very large number of wow, uh, rounds, sometimes a few small things have to go your yeah. way here. And Absolutely, there. I've, yeah. I've said it before, and I say it again: when you're playing this many rounds. It's not good enough to play your best. You've got to win rounds that you have no business winning. Yeah. Absolutely. You've got to have the Absolutely. luck go your way and yeah. suddenly go, I don't know how I won that game, but I somehow managed it. My tournament is still alive. And when you've built up all that pressure and you've finally won the tournament, God, I mean, we'll get Matt in, in here in a moment to uh, have a little talk with him about how he's feeling, but... I know from experience that is, yeah, there he is. You can there see. There we see. We see James waiting by. James White yeah. taking him out of the feature mat match area, yeah. giving him the handshake. Of, of um, course, Matt, Matt has been so close before, and really yeah. the relief. Look he gets at that. There, there right you there. go. He there, is there walking is a, out to applause man, from his fellow gamers. There is a man the that has made, yep. you know, finally achieved his destiny. Yeah, a big hug been, from his friend Nick Butcher there, who's come over yeah. from Australia. That's really lovely. Uh, and yeah, that's um, that's fantastic. It is it is great to see. It's the walk of victory. Yeah, and and like we say, people. like we say, some of these games come down to the slimmest of margins. Like you know, we looked at that ebb and fall potentially stopping that uh, arcane damage. And here he comes. And here he is. Yeah. Here he is, the I'll man tell himself. You what, um, I'm uh, I'm gonna come and uh, actually, I'll I'll hop it. up. I'll get out your way okay. and hand <laughs> it over to the man himself, the methodical Matt Rogers. Congratulations, you get over here. Matt, congratulations, oh. bro brother. That is a hard-fought victory. I know the emotions right now must be <laughs> Look at his uh, boiling over. But um, what what a match! What a great opponent yeah, in Kiki. Yeah. Oh, you you two have uh, you've uh, gone at it before, at, like uh, roads to national finals. Um, always a great match. Yeah. How, how did you feel that last game played out? I would. Oh. Can I swear? <laughs> no, no, please don't. Please don't. I was very scared. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, you the, you ended both on one life, as so yeah. many games of Fab do, and it's fitting yeah. that the finals did as well. What a game. Oh, I was so scared that the Arsenal was another attack, mm. and the, on, on that big turn, the hooves would get yeah. sacked, and the other attack comes would in as Bone well. Bone Marauder or and something like that would have yeah, just been like, absolutely deadly. The amount there. of damage that was possible that turn was mm. just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I... Yeah. <laughs> well, you've done it now. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. The second place curse is no more, clearly. <laughs> oh, I left that behind left a long time ago. <laughs> a long, long time ago. <laughs> left, so. left that behind with old magic. Yeah, Remember that game? Yeah. That, that game got left behind, too. <laughs> <laughs> never, <laughs> never heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Never heard of it? No. <laughs> um, but, Matt, oh. um, obviously, uh, quite quite the accomplishment you you were first national champ now you've got a calling vic victory um uh, now this this is just you know you're gonna get asked what is next for 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 matt rogers uh you just uh obviously back-to-back -back national champs is that the next focus <laughs> yeah 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 definitely that's the next one but i got i got i got my heart and my eyes set on the big one yeah. I want to be the first ever world, world champion. champion. So that, that's, no, that's, 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 what, that's the big goal from here. And well, I th feel like I've got about a year to prepare for it. So <laughs> I'm going to really, really give it everything i got. Yeah, that's well, right. Remember, people, wash your hands so we can get to world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what we're trying to tell everyone. I was wanting here. it last year and then this year and now it's next. Yeah. <laughs> it's we been know a long grind, long road. It's going to be coming at some point. Oh, for sure. There's a lot of players watching out there in Europe and uh, America, and, yeah. and, and we know that it's late there. So thank you very much for staying tuned. Um, you know, Matt Rogers is coming for you all in the world <laughs> when it's finally available. Uh. Man. So, yeah, and I also want to take a moment to point out that you've been organizing this amazing charity event, yeah. which, you, you know, is going on at the moment. Lots of people all around the world, some may even be watching now, who yeah, are getting the chance to Yeah, we've got 170 people in it. That's yeah. amazing. That's, and, I was blown away. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know, we've, we've hey, even gotten the newspapers yeah. because yeah. you've uh, <laughs> raised over $40,000 for cancer research, and that is, you know... Good on you, man. Yeah, we, we raised 40000 yeah, no, Like, no, so no, many yeah. of the viewers, yeah. I'm sure, mm. just so many of the community, everybody pitched in, eh? Like, yep. just the amount of people that pitched in is honestly just breathtaking. Absolutely. Like, it's, well, what, what, what we achieved is just 
really, really cool, yeah. right. to be honest. All right, Matt, I can, I can see uh, the boss uh, wanting to do the, <laughs> yeah. the rewards. We'll give you one last chance to say to the world any final words before we let you go pick up your prize. Yeah, I guess uh, winning an event like this, there's, there's very few feelings in life like this. It's, yeah. it's just emotionally, it's just amazing. So to any aspiring competitive players out there that want to work towards this, it's worth every effort, every hour, every everything. Like, uh, you actually, know, go for it. Sorry, it's really, really know, worth it. I don't know if you heard, nobody plays this game. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a bubble or something. That's it's a, a pop. Uh, yeah. That's what I hear. Again, yeah. Matt, congratulations. A historic win. Matt Rogers, well done. Thank well you. Done. Thank you so much. Thank Don't you, everybody. Praise, mate. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Thanks, guys. Oh, well, look. Straight to the pool house with that trophy. <laughs> yeah. It has been a phenomenal weekend, and it has finally come to a close. Well, thing. I mean, not, not finally. We are going to throw to Jane. I believe we're throwing to James doing the, the award ceremony now. Oh, but, fantastic. But from yeah. us, what a, what a stream it's been. Callum, you've done a great job. To uh, the crew ba behind, the, behind the scenes, wonderful job. To everyone, thanks for watching. It has been a wonderful time, and we are looking forward to more fab in the future. Absolutely. See you then. Let's start. Let's start with our fallen finalist, Kiki Labard. Come on down, Kiki. <laughs> Please do. What have we got? Karen Haas! Well done, Kiki. Thank you very much. And now, really, the man who can't lose, he's proven that uh, he did. Thank you, that man. Thank you, that man. Matt Rogers, champion of The Calling Auckland 2021. Get that trophy in there, mate. <laughs> Maybe I just get one with uh, handing in the trophy. Put that man around. Let's see what his goal foil is.
Saga Skolda. I don't know, that's a new one to me, mate. <laughs> oh, something to be discovered. Beauty, beauty. Well, that's all it, right. folks, for the calling main As event. Congratulations hear, again James to Matt White Rogers, and thank you all. <laughs> it is all over. Matt Rogers has won his gold foil prize card. Thank you very much for sticking with us for this weekend. We know it's been a long one, and that the, the time zones uh, are not the greatest, and some people are staying up way past their bedtimes. But thank you very, very much. It's been a fantastic weekend. We hope that inspires everybody around the world to go out, play some cards in the flesh and blood. Uh, this is Calum signing out, and we'll see you next time at the next big event.